What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to College Football Talk with Peter Burtnett. Apologies for the delay in getting this video up and posted. I went back to Ohio for my best friend Joseph's wedding. I was the best man in that, and life just got a little bit busy after that. I might, might fill you all in on some of the details on that at, at a later time, but good to be back. And in today's episode, I'll cut straight to the chase. I'm going to be talking about, you've seen it in the title too, I'm going to be talking about the Georgia Bulldogs and just their their chances, kind of give my thoughts on whether I think they will be able to achieve an historic three-peat. Um, in a few of the previous videos, I've kind of been breaking down the teams that I think have a good shot to beat them. I haven't covered all of those teams yet. Still have a couple teams like Ohio State, Alabama um, that I really want to dive into. Dove into so far Michigan, Washington, Florida State, USC, and obviously there are other teams as well. But in this video, I really want to lock in on the Bulldogs and talk about why... I think they could be the first team since Minnesota from 1934 to 36 to three-peat. And a couple of reasons why maybe I think that will be something that's really hard to accomplish. So let's start out with, with the positives on this team. And when you look at their defense, Georgia's entering a phase that Alabama has been in, which is just this ability to retool. I mean, they're losing really four really high-level players in, in the secondary, you've got Keely Ringo and Christopher Smith, and then kind of more in that front seven, you've got uh, Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith. So those are th four generational talents for this team, but the Bulldogs do have some guys coming back that will help ease that. One of those guys is um, Mikel Williams. He's a defensive end. He's only a sophomore, but he already has kind of this expectation to be the next great Georgia uh, defensive end. And so that's that's one name to watch for the Georgia Bulldogs. He's he definitely has the size for it. He's six foot five. Williams is really going going to be. I think he has the potential to be to be the next big thing for the Georgia Bulldogs on that defensive line. And then in the second secondary, one of the names that I'm drawn to is Javon Bullard. I think he was the defensive player of the game in both the Peach Bowl win over Ohio State and in the national championship win over TCU. And so he will kind of lead that secondary at strong safety, I'm sure will help in a lot of ways to ease the losses of the two cornerbacks that I already mentioned. And so the Georgia defense too, not only do they just have some of these guys who are establishing themselves, and even though they lost like four high-level players, they actually have, I think, yeah, seven starters returning to that unit. So I wouldn't expect too much of a step back defensively. If anything, just kind of keep keep things going and maybe even become even better defensively. But the Georgia Bulldogs defense, I don't think will be where the issues are. I think defense, as it has been in their run so far, will be what carries them. And their scheme is just, you know, built to be really probably the best defense in college football. And they've really proven that the last couple of years. When you look statistically, I mean, they might not literally rank as the top, but in scoring defense, they were fifth with 14.3 points per game. Rush defense, they were the best in the country with just 77 yards per game allowed. Passing, they were down at 53. So that is one area to watch. But I will say with passing, the SEC has gotten a little bit more pass heavy. So some of those numbers might be a little bit skewed and, uh, you know, still being just outside the top 50 when there's 130 teams is not bad by any stretch. And then total defense, just shy of 300 yards per game, they ranked ninth. And another thing too, one final point on the defense, they only had a plus one turnover margin, which was 65th in all of college football. So if they can, you know, create more turnovers, they'll just be that much more dangerous. And so that'll, that'll be something to watch for the Georgia defense is how they do at forcing turnovers and obviously on the flip side of that as well how the offense is able to take care of the ball because they were able to do that pretty well last year but now looking at the offense and this is an area that really is to me pretty 50 50 because in terms of 50 percent like I'm confident because they have a lot of guys returning especially I mean just probably the best tight end in college football Brock Bowers and at the same time they do have some questions especially at the quarterback position and so that that being Carson Beck being the quarterback, he had, you know, really about a game's worth of stats last year, 26 for 35, four touchdowns, 310 yards, no interceptions. So when he did come in, he was clean. He was able to complete a pretty good percentage of his passes. But it's a big difference stepping in for somebody like Stetson Bennett, who 
might not have had the numbers of somebody like Heisman winner Caleb Williams, but he had the leadership, he had the poise, he had just the ability to direct the game. I don't. I hesitate to call him a game manager because I know that term can sometimes be used to kind of slight a quarterback and say that they're not not as good as you know as other quarterbacks who have kind of the more flashy abilities. But you know, for Beck, I would say the pressure on him is more just to step into that leadership role. Like he's he's proven himself to get to a school like Georgia that he has the tools to be a quarterback. But it really is the pressure of stepping in, and I think that's a question for the Bulldogs. Really, the only way to find out is when when Carson Beck takes the field as quarterback, takes that first snap, and he he will be eased into it, I will say. UT Martin at home, Ball State at home, South Carolina at home is probably out of the four the toughest, and then UAB at home. So those first four games will really be just kind of able to ease him in. And then, as I mentioned, you have a guy like Brock Bowers at tight end, who is both not only one of the best receiving tight ends, but is well-rounded in his ability to block and be a part of just all around the Georgia offense. And then two receivers who are returning starters from last year, Ladd McConkey and uh, Marcus Rosemey Jackson. I hope I said that right. And then even their, their kind of third third receiver is, is not technically a returning starter, but Dominic Lovett is also on you know kind of to the to watch list in terms of players who can step up from Georgia so Beck will certainly have the the guys around him to help with that and then a running back like Kendall Milton who will just be able to provide a lot for that Georgia offense as well and it does also it is also huge to be able to be bringing back three of the five offensive linemen starters they do lose both of their tackles so I would I would argue those are maybe probably you know especially left tackle is probably the most important position on the offensive line because it's the blind side and center certainly is too because that's the guy who's you know calling out where the defense is calling out all the, the you know the mics and all that stuff and obviously snapping the ball so having having Cedric Van Pran coming back there will be huge for the Bulldogs but offensively I think they will have some questions that need to be answered I think if Beck can just ease in and doesn't make any mistakes and plays as as expected in those first four games, it'll build up that confidence heading into a road game at Auburn. And Jordan Hare is never easy to play in. The Tigers had a down year last year, I think five and seven. But I think that that'll be a game where he'll be tested really for the first time. In South Carolina, maybe. I mean, we saw it last year with when they beat Tennessee. They could put up a lot of numbers defensively, maybe not quite as strong. But that'll be that'll be a good kind of early test, and it'll help to be at home against the Gamecocks. And so the Georgia Bulldogs, I do want to get to whether or not I think they will win that three-peat. And a point that I want to make, first of all, is I believe the last team to have won two in a row was Alabama 2011 and 2012. And they also had, they had a manageable schedule, I would say. I would probably say it's slightly tougher than what Georgia has this year. But Alabama 2013, they rolled all the way into the Iron Bowl, and anybody who has been a college football fan knows what happened in that 2013 Iron Bowl. It was a huge matchup, and I think it's kind of a similar matchup could be that Georgia t- at Tennessee game in the second to last week of the season. If if they lose that though, and if that's the only game they lose, I, they're they're def- they're definitely still in the playoff because they would with that more than likely be SEC champions. Obviously, it's possible if Tennessee runs the table and they win the East, like they win that game against Georgia, they win the East. I think that would actually help Georgia even more because they would only have one loss. They wouldn't have to play in the SEC championship game. They'd probably be a lock for the playoff. But the the differences between this team and that Alabama team in 2013 is that there was no college football playoff then. So when Alabama lost... And Auburn, first of all, was able to jump them, and just Alabama probably would have fallen anyways. It kind of knocked them out of the picture. Georgia this year benefits from, first of all, a a very manageable schedule, and they also benefit from having, you know, a couple extra spots to what Alabama had that year. I would say, no doubt, Georgia is a lock for the college football playoff. I That game against Tennessee definitely is, is a game that they could lose. I think they're able to win it this year. But, and I think they win the SEC title game as well. I think Georgia runs the table. I do think there's a couple of teams that can maybe give them a fight. But, and I'm not making an official prediction yet, but if I did have to say, 
I do think Georgia can get the three P done this year. I think they they have a lot of starters returning. Yeah, they have some important losses, some guys that are that are at, in the NFL now, or losing a guy and losing a guy like Stetson Bennett at quarterback. But the the schedule will allow it, so they can kind of. I guess the the biggest thing they'll have to guard against going through that is complacency, and you know maybe there's a team that that I'm not anticipating that'll have a good good year this year and that can challenge the Bulldogs. But again, I don't really see that happening until that Tennessee game. So those are my those are my thoughts on the Georgia Bulldogs. I think they are in a really good position to achieve something that hasn't been done for almost what 80 years uh, in the in the AP poll era. It, was I think 36 was the first year so it happened like the first year of the AP poll was a three-peat it hasn't happened since so a lot a lot of history is on the line for the Bulldogs this year and I think Georgia has the tools has the players and just has that you know flow going right now that they are certainly the favorite to win the college football playoff again But that's it for this episode of College Football Talk with Peter Burnett. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely helps me out. Turn on those post notifications so you are always up to date when I post. And we're going to be we're going to be getting these back out to to you guys uh, a little bit quicker here because getting getting back into the to workflow after being on vacation. So, again, thank you so much for watching. This is Peter Burnett, College Football Talk, signing out. Peace.